Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree farmhouse napkin holders in two styles. And this is a requested video. And we're going to make ours out of craft sticks. Yay, we're going to use the popsicle size as well as the tongue depressor size for the two different options. One's going to use one, one's going to use the other. And we're going to use our glue gun. But again, if you want to use wood glue or E6000 or whatever you want to do, um, and then we're going to need a scissor, just a regular scissor. I'm also going to use the X-Acto knife just because when we use hot glue, sometimes it oozes. Um, and then if you want to paint, that's an option. I'll show you them both finishes um, at the end. Okay. So the first one we're going to make is what I'm calling the crate style. Um, I found a cute little popsicle crate on Pinterest. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the popsicle crate we're going to make. Um, and they were using it for a wedding to put two little rosebuds in, um, just the, the heads of the roses. It was really cute. So I wanted to show that to you guys and come up with one, um, that's going to be a little bit bigger. And because, um, this is a requested video, um, one of, um, you all emailed me, I don't know if she wants me to say who it is, <laughs> but emailed me for farmhouse napkin holders. Um, and I came up with these two. There are other ones out on the um, on the YouTube there. Uh, people have taken the plastic napkin holders that they already sell at the Dollar Tree and they've made them, um, decorated them up to be farmhouse style. But these are just the ones that I've come up with. Um, I've made all these popsicle crafts and craft stick crafts with just two packages, one of each size, and this is going to be the end of these packages. Um, so I'm going to have to run to the store and get more supplies, but I got a lot out of these $2 worth of popsicle sticks. So I, in the description box, I have a list of all of the measurements of all of the pieces except for the very, very last second fence, and I'll tell you about that when we get to it. Um, but you go ahead and refer to all the sections down there. Um, but basically for the, um, this, it's going to look like a faux crate. We're going to use uh, the tongue depressor size as well as some of the regular popsicle size for supports. But you can make the supports out of the tongue depressor size if you only have one size. But you see there, um, I'm just using the, the popsicle stick size because there's more of them, honestly, in a package. You get a hundred of those as opposed to just um, 60 of the other, okay? Now, um, what I've decided to do for this is I've created like a base, basically. Um, and if you want this to be wider, if you have a huge family and you want this to be wider, you can go ahead and make it four popsicle sticks or tongue depressors wide if you want to for that base. And then I'm sorry that most of this is off the screen. I had no idea my, that my camera had fallen. But basically, just like we made the fence uh, for the ornaments the other day, we're just creating... Um, the two supports, and then we're spacing the four popsicle sticks, um, de tongue depressors evenly across there, and gluing at the top and the bottom. And we're going to repeat that for two sides, all right? Now, these aren't like, um, I don't want to say they're not super sturdy, because they are pretty sturdy, um, but you want to be mindful of it, because after all, it's just glue and wood. But I think that if you... Um, buy sometimes you buy um like the one I have it for Christmas it's really you know I bought it and it costs like a lot of money but it still just feels like uh, flimsy wood um, but if you wanted to take the plastic one and build this little box around the plastic one for more sturdiness you could um, lots of options as you know um, so um, just creating the two sides and then I'm gluing them to the bottom there's not really any tricks to this particular um, napkin holder it looks pretty straightforward um, the napkin holders that I found um, size wise all seem to be a minimum of seven and a half inches square um, because apparently that's I don't know standard decorative napkin size or something I'm not really sure but um, what I wanted to make this one if you notice that this crate is actually four slats high and the actual cr little crate that we're going to make for the condiments is actually um, only three slats high but I did that so that the napkins wouldn't fold over it does look a little bit more like a fence this way than um, than a crate um, and I was contemplating making the sides and just putting folded napkins in it um, but just to give you guys an idea of of those are some of the 
the things that you can do differently as well to personalize it and customize it to make it yours. And to use popsicle sticks when you cut the rounded ends off of the tongue depressors, I think the biggest width you can get is five and a half inches, which is why this is only five and a half inches wide. And it doesn't have any sides. So there is that. And I like I said, it's super simple. I don't I feel like I could just talk to you guys. How you guys doing? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you here is I'm just gonna turn the turn this uh, cuteness level up factor up one and um, we're going to make a mini crate uh, for the salt and pepper shakers these salt and pepper shakers were from the dollar general um, they had roosters on them and I covered the roosters with little tiny chalkboard labels um, but you can find salt and pepper shakers like this at the Dollar Tree but what I showed you when I first got the salt and pepper shakers out were I measured them I wanted to make sure that they would fit um, to s decide if I needed to use the wider tongue depressors or the smaller popsicle sticks. And because my two um, salt and pepper shakers fit within three inches when they're hugged together, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the popsicle sticks. All right. And like I said, the measurements are all down below, but this one is actually like four inches wide um, by three, I think three inches, two two and a half or three inches deep. Um, and it, I just thought it looked really cute together so that you can kind of see that that napkin holder is supposed to be leaning towards like a country crate sort of situation. Um, and and I when she asked me about this, I really did have like tons of different ideas going in my head. But obviously, I, I can't show you how to do something. I can't show you how to do 90 things in a 15 minute video. Actually, this one's 20, but do you know what I'm saying? Um, so for this one, we're going to create the bottom panels, the side panels, all individually. Um, so, oh, so, mm, hi, my train of thought has just left me at the station. Um, <laughs> I was saying that I couldn't do um, all of the ideas in a 20 minute video. Um, so um, if you if I can think to make more for you guys, I will. But these are the two of the cutest, easiest, simplest, least expensive ones that I could come up with, okay? Um, yeah, total cost, I think they're probably 50 cents each. Not even, I don't even think it's 50 cents worth popsicle sticks, um, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm measuring um, out the sizes and I'm trying to do this to keep it uniform because when you create these four panels, as I was saying, um, this crate is very easy. You basically make the bottom and then you make four different sides. And to make it come together as perfectly as possible, we're going to actually use measurements and not just like measure off each other. We're going to actually use a ruler and get it precise measurements. And you know, these, these craft sticks and popsicle sticks and tongue depressors all cut with this scissor, just a standard regular craft scissor, nothing special or office scissor. I think this is an office scissor that I use. Okay, and um, then we're going to create each of the four walls and the bottom separately. So the bottom is the only one that's slightly different in um, in create in uh, in design. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word design. Um, you're going to use four popsicle sticks uh, for the base, and then you're going to use three for each side to go, uh, you know, three to go up um, and around. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut all of our pieces the same and then we're going to cut the supports. Um, and like I said, refer to um, the dimensions in the description box down below. It'll be able to tell you everything that you need size wise. Um, but if you are designing this for your salt and pepper shakers that might be a little smaller, then you can go ahead and adjust otherwise. And at the very end, I'll talk you through how we made one if you're Salt and pepper shakers are a little wider, okay? So I'm just individually building it together. The, um, the base, you have an option of putting the supports on the inside of the crate or the outside of the crate. I chose to put mine on the outside of the crate. A, it'll be a lot easier to glue the base to the um, sides, but B, um, I also thought it would look cute with little feet on it as well, like elevated. Okay, so we're just going to repeat with all four sides. Okay. 
And like I was mentioning before, we're going to we're using hot glue. Um, but if you feel that you want to really, um, what am I going to say, beat these things up, you can use um, wood glue, you can use E6000 or Fix-All Adhesive or any of those things that um, are good for wood, okay? But I like the, um, I like the uh, doneness, the quickness in its finished product by using the hot glue. Plus the hot glue, um, when it's not sandwiched between two things, cleans up rather well. So it cleans up, that's another thing to keep in mind, okay? If you do use wood glue, make sure you wash um, with water, uh, clean up the glue with water because you want to make sure that you don't leave the residue there, especially if you're going to stain it or paint it, okay? And now I have the four sides together and I kind of used the base to make it square. Um, now that I have four sides together, I'm going to glue. And I realized that I only needed to glue the short sides because um, this particular box, um, the short sides are um, hit, the, hit the ends of the base. The, the long sides don't. So now I'm just peeling all that glue off that I just put on there as soon as it's cooled off. And I added just a little drop of extra glue on the inside of the crates where it meets the uh, side support, meet the sides. All right. And once that's cooled off and cleaned up, this is how it looks. They look so cute together, don't they? I know, I know. Stop. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the second option that we have here is a picket fence. Um, now, we made a picket fence um, for our uh, popsicle stick ornaments that we made the other day and we added the pep, the picket fence um, with the rooster on it to the middle of that wreath so it's going to be along the same principles okay except for the um, napkin holder we're going to have to create a base as well as um, we're going to create a two um, two different uprights and we're going to angle our fence um, with the tallest point like the tallest peak in the center and go down from there now when I um, was googling for inspiration um, I found this picket fence napkin holder that was actually in metal with a distressed finish so those are options you can distress the finish if you want I'm just going to paint mine white like a white picket fence um, but you obviously go with what you have decor in your house because these popsicle sticks, if you guys have been around for a while, you know that they do take uh, whitewash paint. They take stain very well. Um, you can try all of these different um, techniques, whatever color suits your particular farmhouse style that you guys have. All right. Um, and... What I'm doing now is once I've created the base, I'm building the fence equally on both sides. Um, this is just an option. If you, if you have a little kitchen table that sits up against the wall and you only need the napkin holder to look pretty from one side, then you can go ahead and just make um, straight across supports on the back. But we're building this as two equal fences across from each other. All right, so... Um, what I'm doing is I'm cutting, like I mentioned, and like I mentioned again, the all of the dimensions are in the description box down below, but the two tallest pieces in the middle, um, and then uh, four of the next size. And I'm just eyeballing it by making it a little shorter. But you actually, you know, want to measure, um, and that's how I came up with the measurements for you all. Now the last part, while I'm cutting and putting these together, um, the last part, and you'll see I didn't record it. Um, but it was something that I had come up with at the very, very end, um, is I basically created almost another, a third fence that was a little shorter. And I created a second base that was actually out of tongue depressors because I needed it to be longer. Um, and I've created um, a little area to put my Dollar Tree mason jar salt and pepper shakers um, with the little handles that we used for the wedding. Um, just like the <laughs> salt and pepper shakers example that was, um, inside the crate, uh, which has cinnamon and cocoa powder from my coffee bar, um, the salt and pepper shakers, uh, mason jars, actually one of them is completely empty and the other one has, um, uh, cinnamon sugar made with Splenda. If that sounds contradictory, but yeah, it's my cinnamon Splenda blend that I put on cinnamon toast. 
which is really good, by the way. I also add it to French toast, which is also really good, but that I digress. Okay, now for this particular one, I'm using some um, sandpaper. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just roughly sanding the bottoms uh, to make sure the edges are as straight as possible. But what I'm also doing is I'm trying to take any really, really sharp burrs off of the pickets. Almost rounding the pickets would be great. Um, the reason we're doing this is because we're going to be placing paper napkins in here and if it's really sharp or if it's got any burrs you could rip your napkins on the way in and out and who wants that. So just take a moment to just do that little extra step okay. And then once we have all of our popsicle sticks cut out in um, the lengths we want them we can go ahead and start assembling. Um, you're going to need two cross braces for each side of the fence. So um, that's why we mentioned five of the um, popsicle sticks at the four inch length for the base and then two for each side. Okay. And um, yeah, for the cross braces, excuse me. Okay. So what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, make them even and um, glue the cross bases on it and then when I go to make the second wall just like we did um, I think we've done this for something before and I can't really remember right now what it was but we're going to assemble it on top um, basically you want to put the popsicle sticks on the corresponding ones and we're going to build the other side of the fence in reverse um, so that um, we make sure that it's even okay um, so they match basically and then we're going to put the secondary support across the bottom because uh, normally a picket fence would have two um, horizontal supports okay and those horizontal supports are four inches just the same as the bottom all right now I am building this for you guys so that you could see how it looks natural and then I'm going to paint it but my suggestion would be that if you know that you want this painted to go ahead and paint it before you assemble it. Um, or unless you have spray paint and you just want to spray paint it when it's done. Um, it's just more difficult to paint the inside of the napkin holder once it's assembled. That's why I'm suggesting that to you guys. But I wanted to show you it in both finishes because not everybody likes um, the white. Not everybody, you know, some people want to leave, see, it, uh, see it natural, leave it natural. Some people want to see um, that they can stain it. So my suggestion is before you assemble the three pieces together to go ahead and paint it or stain it, whichever you choose. Now, if you were going to make the extra section for the salt and pepper shaker, you might want to build three of those fences and just make one shorter. Um, the fence that I built only has one support, um, so they're much shorter. Okay, and the base, like I told you, is the same um, depending on what I needed for my salt and pepper shaker. So the base that I made is three tongue depressors deep. Um, and the, the tongue depressor, just the five and a half inch length long. Um, because they, the, those mason jar salt and pepper shakers have wide handles. So you want to keep that in mind, okay? And then um, just assemble it like we did before. You want to make sure that you put enough glue along the edge. Um, and then you want to make sure, I want to put the sides on while it's standing up because I don't want to accidentally put the fence down too low and then prevent it from standing up evenly. Okay, so once I have the one side and it's like cooled off and set enough, um, then we go ahead and we glue um, the other side on as well. I'm ahead of myself, aren't I? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. So once it's cooled off enough, then I'll show it to you here with some napkins in it. Just these are regular white kitchen napkins. You can fold them in half. You can stand them up. And there they are just sitting with the mason jar salt and pepper shakers. But um, here's what it looks like all painted white. And of course, then I put black napkins in it. <laughs> and these napkins are folded in half. And this is what the little fence that I was talking about looks like. It's just like I said, a second base made with three tongue depressors deep. And I glued a shorter piece of the fence in the front, which I thought was cute because it sort of offsets it. And here is what they both look like together. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I did have so much fun doing it. I don't know, for some reason, playing with popsicle sticks really reminds me of my youth. If you have any questions, 
questions, leave them in the comments down below. Share with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in making one or both of these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And to the subscriber who requested this, I hope you found something that you like. As always, take care. God bless. And see you next time. Bye.